Hello, my name's Rob, and welcome to Swift Slots. And welcome to this week's Swift Slots mail call. So this is a summary of the items that I've had delivered to me in the post this week for viewing on this channel or for making in later projects. So let's get you on the bench and show you them one by one. Okay, so obviously I'm from the UK and I'm supposed to like UK based cars, but I don't. I actually have a classic car from the 70s in concourse condition and I absolutely love it. Member of the club and all the rest of it. But the vast majority of English cars or British cars are just so forgettable. I'm just really unimpressed with the vast majority of them. But American cars, that's a different story. I really, really like American cars right across the board. Obviously, modern cars are a little bit dull for the most part, but anything from the sort of 90s backwards is pretty, you know, pretty good. So one of my most endearing cars throughout the whole of the time is the Mustang. Now, I saw this Mustang kit on one of the YouTube channels that I was watching, and I absolutely fell in love with it. He's actually done it in dark green with the silver, which is exactly how I'll be doing this, but not with the silver bonnet, with the green bonnet. And I thought it was absolutely stunning. In 25th scale as well. So it's going to make an absolutely amazing slot car. Now, I have had to give up a few of my shelf projects to make room for these new ones that I've got coming because I can't build everything. And to be honest with you, this particular car lights my fire a great deal more than some of the ones that I did have on the shelf. And one of them was actually restoring a Skeletrix Mustang into something a little bit nicer. But I thought I'd much rather spend my time doing this particular 25th scale car than doing the old Skeletrix car because this is going to make such a nice model. I absolutely can't wait to get stuck into this one. It's going to have to wait a little while, but it, when I do get round to it, it's going to be an absolutely stunning model. So obviously here are all the parts. I won't go through it in massive detail because you know there's not much point to it. But there we are. So the way that I will intend to make this car is I'm going to make it exactly as if it were a kit. And then I'm going to turn it into a slot car. So I'll have all the engine bay detail and the engine, the, the, the hood will open up and have all the detail on the underside, the full interior, but it'll also be a slot car that'll actually run around the track. Will it be a sports car? No, not particularly, but it will run reasonably well. I do actually have history with turning kits into slot cars with my old hot rod build that I did a few months ago, and I got a few more of those to do as well. And this car will be exactly the same as that type of build. So it'll be a proper kit with all the kit bits on it that you would expect to see and a driver. But when you turn it over, there'll be a hidden motor, a hidden guide as best you can, and it'll actually run exactly like a slot car. It won't be a racing car, but it'll be a really nice model kit and it'll happen to be powered as well. So that's my number one kit that I've got. And for my number two kit in 25th scale, I've got this fantastic El Camino. Now I've been following Cletus McFarlane on his YouTube channel for about the last six or seven years. And he runs an El Camino that he calls Mullet for drag racing. I absolutely love that car. Now this car won't be like Mullet, but it'll just be done as a standard car. But I absolutely had to have an El Camino of my, of my own. I just think they're so pretty. They're absolutely fantastic. This obviously isn't a Mark I. I think it's a Mark II or something like that. But it's still incredibly pretty. And I'm an absolute sucker for a black vinyl roof. And the kit that they showed on the advertising for this car is dark blue with a twin racing stripes and a, and a, a black vinyl roof. And I just think it's a stunning looking model. And also, I think there's something quite perverse about having a, a flat bottomed back not showing the motor in a slot car. I like the fact that you should be see there should be a bump here where the motor is, but you won't be able to see it. It'll be a flat plate across the bottom that will hide the motor. And you think, well, where's the motor? Because this kit will be built like the Mustang. It'll have a full interior and a full engine bay, but it'll also have the fully recessed back end. Now, really, you should be able to see the motor or something, but you won't be able to. And that will be the challenge of this car is to hide the motor within this kit so that you can't see it when you lift the bonnet and see all the engine detail. You can't see it when you look in here and see all the interior and you can't see it in the back. So where will it be? Well, the answer is I don't know yet because that's going to be the challenge of this kit. So again, with the Mustang, we've got all the nice parts in there. We've got a nice set of rubber tires, which I will copy into PU. We've got some tail lights in there. Uh, oh, a couple of metal bars in there. I don't know what they're for. Interesting. And we've got all the interior parts. Now, again, I went on to a 
YouTube Live the other day and I told the guys there that I was going to be turning these kits into slot cars and they moaned and groaned and they said, oh, we're going to get a load of free parts because, you know, slot cars, we just use the body and we don't bother with the interiors. And that's not going to be the case at all. As I tried to explain to them, in my builds, when I build one of these cars, like I did with the hot rod, I want to leave all of the engine bay in there, all of the interior with a driver and any back detail there. I don't want to have the motor sticking up. I want to try and hide it all. So this will be like a proper car, a proper car kit but turned into a slot car and I'm hoping that it'll be of interest to you because I think this is an absolutely beautiful car and I can't wait to get stuck into this one as well. There's a lot of cars that I can't wait to get stuck into but this is definitely the one that I'm looking forward to the most. And for my third and final 25th scale kit, like I said, I've got a thing for American cars. I've got this beautiful Chevy sedan van, I guess it is absolutely love the shape of this car it's absolutely stunning i'm going to be painting it box art i love this kentucky um, logo on the side the i've seen this car done in a slightly darker brown and that's what i'm going to hopefully go for the slightly darker brown with the cream just the same as the box art i just think this is such a pretty car I, this is going to make an amazing slot car. No, it's not going to perform particularly brilliantly around the track, I'm sure. But it's going to look absolutely stunning. I can't wait to get this one done. Obviously, I'm going to have to wait. I've got too many other projects. But this is going to be an amazing, amazing looking car. I really, really can't wait to do this one. The colours on the box art are just absolutely stunning. There's something about American cars that I really, really like. I'm just... British cars just don't really do it for me. They just, they don't have the style and the flair that the American cars have. And I really can't stand the, 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 the 1960s British cars. I'm really, really uninspired by them. But the 1960s American cars, well, they're something else. And they're just on another level. And this is, well, obviously this is a lot earlier than that. But it's just such a pretty shape. So there's the body. I'll go through the parts in here now. It's all much the same. So we've got some glass. We've got the barrels. I won't be using the barrels. I've no time for the barrels. Uh, we've got all the interior. I think you could build these car kits in a couple of different ways with um, sort of modern, a modern take on it, retro mod. But, you know, or you can build it more standard. I'm not sure if this car goes all the way. I'm not sure. But it'll be done like the box art either way. So there's the tyres that I can turn into PU rubber with a little bit of modification. Same with the wheels. So that's so that's that kit all together and I'm hoping that I can get get going with this one fairly soon as well because it's a beautiful beautiful thing. And then continuing on from my old Skeletrix Formula 1 theme that I had going the last mail or call I did, I've got this Polycar. Now, you cannot have a Formula 1 collection no matter how big without one of them being the Polycar series of Formula 1 cars. Now, I haven't even opened this, so I'm going to open it up on screen here now now i've got some plans for this car and I, i've watched harry's video on how to tune it up i've also watched dave's slot car news video showing how he has upgraded this car and i'm going to be taking cues from both of those two videos but i've seen something with this car that i believe i can do a little bit different that's absolutely actually i've just taken it out of the box now and seen it with for the first time it's absolutely stunning it, it it just yeah i don't not normally lost for words but that is absolutely beautiful it's yeah absolutely beautiful the little face and i know we you've all seen this before there's nothing new i'm treading over old ground i completely understand that but this is new for me i love the shape absolutely love it Anyway, back to the point. So I know that the front wheels have some issues with the rubbing wires. Now I've seen two different ways that I could improve that. So I'm going to be doing that on this car. And also Harry modified the back end as well to get a little bit of pod float. And I'm wondering if I can get do exactly the same as that or a little bit more. So this car will be the subject of a little video. I'm going to put it on, on Crow Valley and see what time I can get with it completely standard. And then we'll do my little modification on the front, see which one works. I'll tell you about both of the ideas I had. We'll, we'll go with one and see if it works. And I'll get a little bit of pod float, true up the tyres, and I'm going to give it another run around the track again and see what times I can get with it. But this will be subject to a little, little uh, tune-up video, um, taking cues from Harry and from Dave 
Dave Kennedy and I'll see if I can add my own little flavour to this car upgrade myself. So that'll be a little video coming reasonably soon. And staying with the Formula One theme, I've got this old Skeletrix March. Now, I'm at a bit of a loss with this car. I bought this because I've got that uh, Skeletrix Formula One thing going at the moment, the old classic stuff, and I thought it'd be really cool to have this six-wheeler and then have the other six-wheeler, the one with the, um, the Tyrrell, one with the four wheels on the front, have the pair of these old classic Skeletrix cars together. So I'll have the two old four-wheelers and the two old six-wheelers, and I thought that would make a really cool little set. Now, I got this car, and it turned up to me on eBay with the rear wing snapped, which is a really pity because it's an original wing, and he chipped it in the box, beautifully wrapped the box, but hadn't bothered to wrap the car inside the box. So the car was rattling around, and it snapped off the wing. So it survived all these years, probably 40-odd years, and then just because of some careless eBay seller, the back wing snapped, which is a real pity. But I, what I've done is I've got a piece, I've drilled a, a point, 1.2 mil hole through the wing and through this, because it was already glued in the bottom there anyway, so that was all solid anyway. So I drilled a hole through here, and I've inserted a piece of piano wire all the way through that wing. I don't know if it will show up on camera. This, because this side here is slightly concaved, the side of the drill just started to show through the plastic just here. You can't really see it all that well, but it is there. So then I, well anyway, I got the whole top and bottom, put a piece of uh, piano wire in there, super glued it all up, and now it's absolutely solid. It's stronger than it ever was. You'll never snap in that piano wire. It's way stronger than the plastic, obviously. So the wing is taken care of, albeit repaired. The rest of the car is absolutely mint condition. The tires have got a couple of little tiny cracks, but nothing that's really particularly bad. The engine runs beautifully and the whole thing runs really well. But the, the problem that I've actually got with it is this guide. This guide is a problem. And I'll show you why. Look at the height on the front of that car. It's absolutely obscene. Now I was really, really I was really quite excited when I got this car in the post. Because I really like the car, I thought it was really cool and it's a really nice condition car, apart from the wing which I've repaired, it was a bit annoying. But the car is in really nice condition and it runs really well. And then I put it on the track and I realised that it's basically doing a wheelie. I mean, it, it's absolutely ridiculous, the ground height on the front of this car. It's so much so that the front wheels miss the track by about a mil and a half. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, how on earth they designed a car with such terrible geometry on the front is beyond me. It's so high up, you have to actually run the, the, the braid sticking down like that just to get the braids to touch the track because the natural angle of the track to back wheels to guide is sort of like that, triangulated. And if you have the braids nice and flat, they barely touch the track. So you have to run them pointed up like that just to get them to touch the track. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I was really quite disappointed with the way that this sits on the track. The other two early four-wheelers, uh, four they run really, really nicely. I'm very happy with them. But this one, I'm a little bit kind of, yeah. It's super easy to fix. It's a very easy thing to do. I can easily modify the front end of this car to get that guide all the way down and get the car sitting a nice sort of two mil off the ground all the way along, put some nice soft copper braids on there, and I can definitely get this car to run around the track nicely. But... Do I really want to? Because this car has some value, although whether it has any more or not, I don't really know because of the, the repaired uh, back wing. I guess if I've destroyed the value of the wing, then I may as well destroy the value even more and at least to make it run right. But I'm not sure what to do with this car now. I don't know whether to just sell it or whether I should keep it and uh, modify that front guide or just leave it as is. I don't really feel like leaving it as it is and just leaving it on the shelf because I'll never run it. I will never run it with that horrible gap on the front. It doesn't give me any joy to see that quarter inch gap. I can get my finger underneath it, look. So it doesn't give me much joy to run this car like that. Um, so I don't know what to do with it. I mean, I, 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 I'm contemplating selling it back on eBay, sell it for what I paid for it, I suppose, or I don't know. Keeping it as it is isn't really an option. It's either let it go and buy, use the money to buy something else or just modify it and, and make it run half decent. But then I don't know if it's worth or not. I mean, I don't know. So in the comments, tell me what I should do with this car. Should I just 
I don't really want to leave it exactly as it is and just leave it on the shelf and never run it because it runs like crap. I'm not really interested in that. It's either got to run halfway reasonable for what it is or I can or I can go and sell it to somebody else who might want a really nice condition March. I don't know. But, you know, that's what turned up in the post this March. So there it is. All the little things that I've had delivered in the post this week for projects in the future. So if you've enjoyed this sort of content, maybe you'll subscribe. And if you could hit the little bell button, that would be awesome. So until the next time, thank you very much.